The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations Benton County, Washington on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 34943. Please utilize this five digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new vehicle. Let's start at the front bumper area. Just under the front bumper, you'll find two open-ended tow hooks on the passenger and driver's side frame rail. Moving up onto the bumper face, you'll find dual air horns on the passenger and driver's side. As we move toward the center, you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Just over the driver's area face of the front bumper is where you'll find your mechanical siren. As we move up onto the bumper extension, you'll find on the passenger side your fire bell. Just inside of that location, you'll find a swivel discharge. And located with inside the front bumper extension, you'll find a tubbed storage location for that front bumper load. Let's move up to the cab area where you'll find on the outer edge of the cab a turn marker indicator. Just inside of that location, you'll find your headlight structure housing a low and high beam headlight. The high beam is located on the inside. As we move up from that location, you'll find a turn arrow. Just inside of the turn arrow, you'll find an emergency warning light. Located directly in the center in front of the Pierce logo is where you'll find your three rotating lights. As we move up to the windshield, you'll find three windshield wipers across a seamless one-piece windshield. Moving to the outer edge, you'll find your mirror housing a flat and convex mirror. As you move up to the roof area or brow, you'll find five clearance lights across the very top. And as we move all the way to the roof area, you'll find your emergency warning light bar. Located with inside the light bar is your Opticom. Moving up onto the top directly behind the emergency light bar is where you'll find your two gold lights, one on the passenger and one on the driver's side. Let's take a look at some close-ups of the items we just talked about. This is the front discharge foam capable. As we look just toward the center area, you'll find tub storage location with netting dry deck material inside. Moving up to the Pierce logo area, you'll find your rotating three light emergency warning lights. As we move to the side of the vehicle, we're gonna focus in now on the front section of the cab area. Let's start with the two lower side warning lights. As we move up from this location, you'll find the marker light, and then also you'll find your easily accessible door handles, which can be utilized with a gloved hand. And then also points of entry will have grab handles for gaining access in and out of the vehicle. As we move directly over the front axle, you'll find the number 48. And then moving up toward the handle is where you'll find the bullet style side facing camera. Directly behind that camera is where you'll find an auto eject plug for shoreline power. As we move all the way up to the very top, you'll find a side facing scene light. Let's take a look at some close ups. Here's your camera and also 20 amp auto eject shoreline inlet. As we move to the pump area, you'll find in the lower section, you'll find two discharge drains located here. First, the foam pump discharge drain and the foam pump intake drain. Just inside of the walkway area is where you'll find on the passenger and driver's side a step location for storage. It is vented. And as we move to the cross lays, you'll find an inch and a half lower and upper cross lay. Let's go ahead and review some of the items within the pump panel. We'll first start in the upper left hand corner. Starting first with the number one side large diameter discharge. Moving just to the right, you'll find your Husky 3 foam system specifications placard. Next to it, you'll find an OK to pump indicator indicating a green light that your pump is properly engaged. As we move to the right, you'll find the Husky foam system. There are operating instructions on the module itself, one through four. And as we move to the left, you'll find the green system on and off button. As we move downward, you'll find a digital readout for the foam percentage. And then you also find two buttons, which are gray, increase or decrease. This will increase or decrease the foam percentage. Moving to the right, this is your prime button. 
and further to the right you'll find a system status light, those lights indicating number four on the operating instructions for assistance. Moving further to the right you'll find a schematic and also foam system instructions. And then further to the right in the red module you'll find foam level tank A level indicator. Let's move just to the right of this location to the master gauges. This is the gray area. First on the left is your master intake gauge and then to the right you'll find your master discharge gauge. Between the two of those gauges you'll find the test gauge ports for vacuum and pressure. They're currently plugged and are for testing purposes. To the right you'll find an engine cooler. This allows a right to left turn to open and close. It is not a pull. Moving down you'll find your fire pump primer. It is an air push to prime and you'll also find operating instructions just underneath that. 1000 RPMs for best practices. To the right you'll find your light panel with a red air horn button and to the left you'll find an audible speaker. The outer edge of that bezel does allow you to dampen the sound. As we move further down the pump panel you'll find all of our discharges. They are color coded and labeled indicating also with a red indicator for foam. Moving further to the right you'll find your pressure throttle governor. In the upper left hand corner we'll start first with a check engine light if it is yellow in color illuminating. In the center you'll find a digital readout for the RPM. If luminating it would be red in color is a stop engine light. As we move down you'll find engine diagnostic information. On the very far right of that engine diagnostic you'll find pump temperature. Moving further down you'll find the blue area module with inside. It is your water tank level indicator. And then to the right you'll find a silence button allowing to silence any audible alarms that may be sounding from the pressure throttle governor. Just down from that you have a menu button which will allow you to scroll through the various functions of the pressure throttle governor. Moving down you have two options either pressure mode or RPM throttle mode. To gain access to either of those it's through the blue control mode button. In the center is a digital readout and also an indication for the throttle ready will be a green indicator. And then further to the right you'll find a preset button which allows you to preset any pump pressures or RPM. Moving down you'll find the throttle right to increase left to decrease push in the center for idle. As we move down let's cover some warning information. Fall hazard never ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. As we move to the right you'll find your tank to pump and also your tank fill and recirculating line. Further to the right you'll find your minimum operation maintenance schedule placard. We'll go over that in a moment and then also a warning that only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment and only after they've received proper training. In the center you'll find the 150, 200 and 250 test pressures. On the left you'll find the associated GPM at test pressure and on the right the associated RPM with a five digit job number in the upper left hand corner. This happens to be dash 02 which is truck 2. Let's move further to the right where you'll find an additional set of discharges. And now let's move to the area of the pump panel on the driver's side where you'll find the number one and number two speed lay. You'll also find this warning label because of those hoses there is the possibility of entanglement. That's why we have this warning here. As we move to the right you'll also find when you climb on the apparatus you should always face the apparatus. And as we move down to the lower section you'll find two two and a half inch discharges. You'll also find a warning label here regarding pressure hazard. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move down you'll find the Pierce American Flag Eagle logo. Behind that is your large diameter pump intake. Further to the right you'll find your manual pump shift and then instructions here for operating the minimum operation maintenance schedule placard which we talked about previously and your pump drain. We do have a pan door on the lower right side. It's to gain access behind the pump panel which will gain access to your foam drain. Let's move down into the left on the panel. We'll start first with the left side which is the driver's side auxiliary inlet. It is a female coupling. As to the right you'll find your watchress placard indicating the type of pump that you have, transmission and also GPM. Further to the right you'll find a warning regarding foam failure. Do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam. And at the very bottom you'll find all of our color coded and labeled discharge drains. Further to the right is your draft foam pickup hose and lever. 
Moving further to the right behind the Pandorn, lift and turn latch will gain you access to this location, but let's go back to the Watrous Placard first. You have a CSU, it is a 1,500 GPM pump. Let's go back to the Pandor area. Once again, we can see the top section is your foam drain. You'll also find the yellow handle indicating the foam fill operations and also operation. It does match the placard on the side of the door. Let's take a look now at the body of the apparatus. We'll start by identifying a few items. In the upper left-hand corner, you'll find a side-facing scene light. As we move from this location to the very rear of the body, you'll find a side-facing upper emergency warning light. As we move down directly over the rear axle, you'll find a lower side warning light. And then also to the rear of the axle, we'll find our folding wheel chocks. Let's take a look inside some of the compartments. In this first compartment, you'll find two drawers. The upper is a tilt out and tilt down. The lower section is a pull out. Let's direct up to the very top left-hand corner in this compartment on the vertical wall. Uh, this is a picture here showing the shelves in their full deployed position. They do lock in the lower section in position. When plugged into shore power, the shoreline plugs here will be active. This is plugged into your battery charger, which will maintain battery charge when plugged into shore power. Your S1, which stands for shore power, this is your main breaker outlet. We also have two SCBA storage locations on this side of the truck in front of the rear axle and to the rear of the axle. Once again, that emergency warning light. As we also look in this area, you'll find all of our fill locations. We'll all go over that in just a second here. We're currently being exposed to the silver fuel for ultra low sulfur diesel. As we move up to the top, you'll find D-handle gains access to the tool board. A couple close-ups of the SCBA storage location. Let's jump back now to the diesel fuel. This is the silver cap ultra low sulfur diesel fuel only. And as we move that lever downward, it exposes the 4.5 US gallon DEF tank, which is the blue cap. Let's move up into the compartment now with the tool board in the open or exposed position. You do have a locking latch to allow it to restore. Just simply lift the latch to return back to normal position. As we move to the rear compartment, you'll find a pullout tool board. The lower section does have the release mechanism. And as I'd like to point out, in the upper right-hand corner, the rear wall, you're going to find a shoreline outlet. Once again, this will be active when you're plugged into shore power. Position here with the tool board in the full deployed position. Let's move to the rear of the apparatus. Start at the very bottom section. You'll find perimeter lighting at the real tailboard area. You'll also find on the left and right your DOT required emergency light, stop, turn, and reverse light. You'll also find a cluster of three cupped switches. We'll go over those in just a moment. As we move up from that location, you'll find two lights, rear-facing scene lights, and then also emergency warning lights. At the very top section, you'll find an adjustable spotlight-style flood, uh, which is at the very top section of the side sheet. Let's move back down to the very center area. Just over the roll-up door is where you'll find your backup camera. It is recessed. Just above the Pierce logo is where you'll find a water tank level indicator LED light. And then above that, you'll find your traffic advisor. As we move down to the right side, just right of the Pierce logo, is where you'll find a direct fill 2.5 inch ball valve. And then moving further to the right, the D handle gains access into your ground ladders. I would like to point out there are also fold down steps on the left hand side and also right hand side of the inter side sheet. And as we move up to the very far right, D-handle gains access to our suction hoses at the very top. Here are compartments in the open position. You can see a pull-out tray in the lower section. Let's go back to those three switches. We have a rear scene light, hose bed lights, and also deck lights. Moving directly above this location is where you'll find the number one and number two rear pre-connected discharge. They are foam capable. And as we move to the center, you'll find the lower tray does have the ability to pull outward and does lock in the position. Lower right is the release mechanism. Some close-ups of the camera area. Let's start first with some warning labels. Once again, fall hazard when climbing on the vehicle, always face the vehicle. Also, you should not ride on the vehicle while it's in motion. And then further to the right, we do have an entanglement hazard warning here uh, regarding those hoses coming from aloft of the hose bed. You'll also find a warning label here regarding pressure hazard. 
Once again, caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. As we move to the very center, you'll find your backup camera displayed from in the driver's area. And just above the Pierce logo is where you'll find your water tank level indicator. Further to the right is your ball valve. This is a direct tank fill and the uh, drain is located just right of the ball valve. As we move to the ladder compartment storage, 24 foot roof, I'm sorry, 24 foot extension, 14 foot roof, and a 10 foot attic. We also find our 10 foot large diameter suction hoses. In the hose bed itself, you'll find the two discharges in the very front area. You'll also find top fill location for water and foam. Looking here, this is your water fill location for top fill if you choose to use it. And then on the foam fill location, we do have a warning label here regarding do not mix different brands or consistencies of foam for the possibility of foam failure. As we move to the booster line, in the very front section here in this image, you'll find a tension or free spool knob. You'll also find a location to insert the tool for manual rewind. As we look to the front, this is your Husky 3 foam system hydraulic reservoir. The fill location is on your left hand side. Moving back to the right, you'll find your master stream device and then also your booster line. As we move to the rear section, you'll find tank level for A and also water fill location. And you'll also find hose bed dividers. There are three located in the very rear section of your apparatus. Let's take a look at the cab area. This is a non-walking surface, and that's why we have these two warning labels here. Do not walk in this area, it is extremely slippery. Let's move around now to the passenger side of the vehicle. Start at the rear compartment, compartment door open. At the very bottom, you'll find a pull-out tray, release mechanism on the right. This is in the deployed position, it will lock in the position. Let's move up to the very top section of this compartment, where we'll find when plugged into shore power, this 20 amp outlet will be active. Let's move directly over the rear axle. You'll find SCBA bottle storage and also oxygen bottle storage to the rear of the axle. Directly in the top compartment, you'll find shoreline outlet, 20 amp plug. Let's go back to those SCBA. They do have retaining straps on the two SCBA bottles. And as for the front, same thing, three locations for SCBA bottles. As we move directly down from this location below the light area, you'll find this warning label. Extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures, especially during region. Be cautious where you park your vehicle. As we move to the forward compartment, three adjustable shelves, and at the very top section, you'll find that shoreline outlet 20 amp also. Let's move midship location. We'll identify a few things within the pump panel on the passenger side. Let's first start in the upper left-hand corner with a warning label here regarding fall hazard when climbing on the vehicle. It's important to face the vehicle. As we move to the lift and turn, this will gain access behind the pump panel. As we move down, you'll also find your real rewind switch, and then also a warning label here regarding entanglement hazard because of those hoses just in front of us. As we move down, once again, an additional pressure hazard warning. Caps may be under pressure. Be cautious when opening them. Just to the right, you'll find the passenger side two and a half inch discharge. Moving further forward to the cab lift module, there are instructions for raise and lower, and also some danger information and warning regarding the movement of that cab. As we move down to the lower section, you'll find this is the access panel for gaining inspection behind the pump panel. As we move further down into this inspection panel, we'll talk a little bit about that when we've got an image to show what's behind it. But on this side, we have the Pierce American Flag Eagle logo, large diameter pump intake, and then just to the right, we have our large diameter pump discharge. Let's take a look inside is where you'll find your relief valve. You can see the set screw on the side. And then let's move downward from this location. You'll find all of our discharge color coded drains and also the right side auxiliary inlet. You also have a step location inside that step area. You do have additional storage. As for the front section on the passenger side, same configuration except for the plug-in shoreline power. Let's move inside into the officer space. We'll first start with the door panel. All of our safety and warning information is located on the door panel. As we move to the front section, a pillar you'll find at the base, your fill location for your windshield wiper fluid. Your vehicle also is equipped with that front bell and this is the rope for controlling it. The vehicle also is equipped with a supplemental restraint system, airbag, Please do not mount anything within this area. 
As we move to the left of the officer's dash area, you'll find air horn, mechanical siren, and siren brake. You'll also find tool volt access via USB and also barrel style. As we look overhead, you'll find push on and off either white or red lenses. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other items. In the front panel, you'll find your AM FM weather band radio, set of switches housing emergency master, driver side scene, passenger side scene, rear scene, and then this is the control module for your go light on and off and a joystick. This will be for the passenger side go light. Let's move around now to the driver's side of the vehicle. As we look inside, affixed to the door panel, we'll find all of our safety and warning information. You'll also find your latch and door lock and also window control. As we move down to the step area, you'll find your air inlet fill. At the base of the seat, you'll find when plugged into shore power, your battery voltage indicator will be active. I'd like to point out in the upper right hand corner in this image, this is a yellow placard manufactured by Pierce for your department. It has the date of manufacture, five digit job number, gross vehicle weight rating, cold tire inflation, VIN number, and all of the fluid capacities for each component, the type of uh, fluid and also fluid types. Let's move about the floorboard left knee area. As we start, we'll first start on the left hand side with the set of switches down at the lower section, ABS diagnostics, DPF regen, engine diagnostics, and regen inhibit. Those are all part of the engine transmission ABS J1939 diagnostic port, and then your master battery switch. Let's move up from this location where you'll find your pump shift. We do have instructions on this module for road to pump, and then also from pump to road. For pump operations before exiting the cab, you'll need pump engaged and OK to bump, both green indicators illuminating for pump operations. Let's move up from this location. On the left hand side, you'll find the start and ignition switch. Just inside of that location, you'll find an EM switch, which stands for emergency master. This will engage or disengage all emergency lights. To the right, your headlight, and also further to the right, a panel switch allow you to brighten or dim lights within preview of the operator. Further to the right, your high idle indicator and OK to engage the high idle switch. And to the left, you'll find your transmission oil, DEF level, and water temp. On the right, you'll find the front and rear air, volts, and fuel. Located in the center, tachometer and speedometer. Diagnostic information does display above and below the speedometer. Let's move just to the right within the same area where you'll find your, at the very top, your monitor for your backup camera and also side facing cameras. You'll also find a switch bank. We'll go over those in just a moment. And then also you'll find the yellow diamond, which is your pull to apply your system parking brake or push to release. Just to the right, you'll find a digital readout for the Allison transmission pad with an indication to pump in drive. As we move further to the right, you'll find windshield wiper control, and also if you push, it will display water onto the windshield for a wash. Moving further to the right, climate control for defrost, heat, and air conditioning. Let's take a look back at those switches. We have our electric or also air horn, mechanical siren, electric horn, a siren brake, Opticom switch, high beam flash, and your AM FM radio on and off. Further to the right is your windshield wiper. Let's move downward where you'll find your engine brake on and off, a setting switch for that engine brake for low, medium, and high, off-road traction, a tire change which is a protected switch, mirror heat, and load manager. Let's move further to the right where you'll find your flat mirror and convex mirror controls. As we move up to the very top section, you'll find your climate control, heat and defrost, and also air conditioning. Let's look overhead, first starting on the left-hand side, driver's side, this placard is your height, nine feet, 9.75 inches, 33 feet, 11.5 inches, and 42,000 pounds. Moving further to the right, you'll find emergency master, your roto ray, driver scene, passenger scene, rear scene, and then just below that, you'll find your go light control and also your traffic advisor. Moving further to the right, you'll find your siren control module and also PA speaker system. Further to the right, directly in the center area is where you're gonna find your Pierce seat belt information, red indicating they're in the seat, not belted, green that they are belted. 
Underneath this area, you'll find a red flashing light indicating do not move your apparatus. You may have a compartment or door ajar. Behind the officer seat, you'll find two 12 volt access bus panels. As we move overhead, you'll find once again push on and off red or white lenses, stereo speaker, and headsets. As we move to the rear cab configuration affixed to the door panel, all of our safety and warning information, also window control, door latch, and lock. As we move to the rear section, you'll find four seat locations, two fixed mount in the center with SCBA, and two fold down on the outer edges. You'll also find compartments forward of those locations, which have compartment lights and netting material. Inside those compartments, you'll find shoreline outlets. Once again, this will be active when plugged into shore power. At the base, you'll find your lift and turn latch will gain access for your daily checks for the oil and transmission. Let's take a quick look from the front section to the rear wall, identifying two SCBA seats and then two fold down seats on the outer edges. Congratulations, Benton County, Washington, on your new Pierce Fire Apparatus, job number 34943. If you have any questions about this video or questions regarding your apparatus, please contact your Hughes Fire sales representative. Thank you and congratulations.